Hello everybody, so in this series, which is going to be a long ongoing series, it will also be quite casual in the sense that it's just there to inform and it's for those who love to read or love to learn, but not necessarily in terms of content creation or earning money or that kind of stuff, right? In this series, which is going to probably take me a long time, I'm going to read Ezekiel from start to finish as well as the book of Daniel from start to finish. I am a very slow reader and I did not intend to go into his 2D so hard, but it happened anyway. So we're going to take it section by section, maybe sometimes as it happened right now, sentence, the first sentence immediately brings about so much information that I want to discuss. Some of the information, well, I would say 60% of the information comes from books and the other 40 to maybe 30% is speculation of my part. Let's talk about Ezekiel first. So its name, as you may already know, is that it means God strengthens, God makes strong. And the unusual thing about Ezekiel, as it's described by John McKay, is that Ezekiel receives his vision outside of the Holy Land. And so as a result, he also goes into great detail as to how he meaning Ezekiel, came about this vision, how he was called upon by his God. And the reason why it's so detailed is because, according to the author, they think that Ezekiel had to prove something to prove himself to be a prophet. Now, there are many references from Ezekiel in the tarot itself. And the reason why that is, is because the tarot at once, not so much in the modern tarot anymore, but the tarot at once was very much intertwined with the systems of the Kabbalah, with the systems that we can read in the holy books. And the the vision of Ezekiel, although at some point considered lesser than the visions of Moses, for instance, because Ezekiel is very eccentric for the Jewish faith, very eccentric. So Ezekiel eventually became very much on vogue, especially when the Kabbalah was uh, coming into existence. The ceremonial branch really utilizes the visions of Ezekiel as well as the teachings of Solomon. The golden dawn happens to be its fruit of the earliest ceremonial branch. And so this is why the tarot, perfected or refined by ceremonial magicians, has a very strong leaning towards the imagery that Ezekiel received. So his eccentricity gave birth to new systems, new concepts, new ideas, new revelations, basically. So there's that. And then, of course, there's the whole debacle about Daniel. I don't know much about Daniel, but that will come about later because we can see that in the strength card and it has to do with Crowley's psyche. So it's just important that I have to get through this, even though it's not easy to read. So that's what this is about. So the first thing that stands out to me from the intro of the Jewish study Bible, which I totally recommend you get, is the essence of judgment and hope. The essence element of Assyria and Babylon are used by God as instruments of judgment. And Ezekiel is the opposing force as um, a call for hope, basically. That's how I would interpret it right away, right now there is a, a path to redemption and I find it's very interesting because that's exactly where we start at the base of the tree with the with the mahod and then we have a tie to judgment this judgment card in the golden dawn runs from mahod to hold and hold is just it's just very interesting so let's start with this beginning so in the beginning it says here so in the beginning it says here in the 30th year on the fifth day of the fourth month while I was among the exiles of the Kavar River, the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. And I want to stop up right here already. So the 30th year, so the 30th year, the fourth month and the fifth day. That is interesting to me. So first of all, we can say 30 is Lamed. It can be filed away under Lamed as a defining characteristic of the letter. So it means to come of age within the Jewish culture. A man can become a priest and is no longer a trainee. And with the age of 40, which would be correlating with Mem, the person will be able to study the Kabbalah. So Mem is correlating, uh, Mem is correlated with Chokhmah, which is divine wisdom. Lamed is the epitome of teaching and being taught. 
And these teachings are generally coming from the heart and of the heart as the center of the Aleph Beit, from the core of the religion or belief. The letter reaches the highest, connecting to the divine realm and bringing this into actuality. Lamed is also seen on the justice card or the hanged man card, it depends on the system. The fourth month, and this I find some so interesting as well. So the fourth month corresponds with the Jewish month of Tammuz, which interestingly also is the Babylonian god that has been worshipped at the Temple of Jerusalem. Uh, this will become evident later down in the story itself. I've read like the first three chapters or something, or first four. Um, and Tammuz is derived from the earlier shepherd god Dumuzi. It is a, 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 a Tammuz is like a god of gates of death and rebirth, and this is typical. And these particular themes are so in tune with what Ezekiel means to describe, as his people are cast out of their homeland, forced to live a life as refugees. God has a new plan for them, and this is a new chapter for the people of Judea. It's also to note the point of the judgment card, in my opinion. Ezekiel seems to be particularly attuned to explain the base part of the Tree of Life, especially when paired up with the Tarot of the Golden Dawn. Tammuz is the Mesopotamian god of fertility or of death and resurrection, very similar to the Orphic themes perhaps. He is also the gatekeeper of the gate to heaven, and Babylon itself actually means the gate of the gods in Babylonian. The fifth letter is... So we have then the fifth day, and the fifth letter is associated with the five gates to enter the divine realm, leading to salvation. And this is evident within the Hierophant card, but it also correlates with that aspect of judgment cast from Gevurah, the fifth sphera, right? So this is a tie back to the theme of judgment that Asher and Babel are 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 used by God as a means to call for judgment. And Gevura is, of course, the Svera of judgment. It is associated with the five petals of the rose of Israel. Uh, these growing clusters of five, nine, and thirteen leaves. This rose is the cup of blessing held between five fingers, as the mystery describes. This is at the very beginning of the Sohar. The assembly of Israel, or the Knesset, I guess, is introduced to us in likeness to a rose, along with the five petals, the five gates to the divine realm, the five spherot emanating from Bina, that's what they mean with that, the 13 petals of compassion surrounding Shekhinah from every side. And that is just one sliver <laughs> of already showing so much of what is to come in terms of the story. Kabbalistically speaking, that is. And according to the intro of the Jewish study Bible, judgment and hope, and this just speaks of chesed and gevurah, and to a lesser extent of hold and netzach. And that I find so interesting because we see this, uh, we see this basically central within uh, Crowley's um, tarot with the strength card. Then I want to focus on the vision, me'orot, Elohim. And this is a rather interesting one because it relates to some extent, I think, to the fourth day of creation. I remember touching on it very briefly to try and figure out the disparity present within the fourth letter, namely the letter Dalet, or the one tied to the emperor in the tarot as the fourth card. And it's to go from the emperor to the hierophant, respectively. So Me'orot means light, and that also means vision. And so light and vision go hand in hand. And it is particularly important to Ezekiel, who is very visual about his mystical experiences with God. The aspect of the Me'oro may even, although speculation from my side, <laughs> show the origins of the Tree of Death theory later on explained and adapted into the Jewish faith. And its story depends somewhat, but the Lurianic one is especially fitting for what has occurred in the first chapter of Genesis and their renewed appreciation for Ezekiel, who has been put away as an imperfect prophet by many Jewish scholars prior. So the story about the Me'orod basically entails that it is spelled deficiently without any vavs, the sixth letter. And so it can be read as Me'ora, meaning curse. Even this motive is oddly fitting for what has befallen the people of Judea. They find a loss of vision, 
not quite as literally so as to what happened to Apostle Paul, for example, but certainly metaphorically, they are cast out hopeless and afraid. They come to battle with the harsh realities of existence, and so they have need for God and his guidance. And Ezekiel retains his vision, this calling. And Ezekiel retains this vision, this calling, the moment he is addressed by God himself. This is where the Vav, the essence of our connection with the divine and Tiferet, as well as the elevation of Moses, to some extent maybe the traces of Adam, come into play. It's the reinstating of vision and light. And this is particularly evident within the path between Netzach and Tiferet. If it relates to parts of the tree of death shattered under the sheer power of the light, creating these empty husks, these klipoth, it is up to the believer or Kabbalist to reinstate the light of God into them once again. So this leads to into another point important to understanding the tarot and maybe even Ezekiel's vision. Light and vision are important aspects that deal with the essence of what happens between Hod and Netzach. The chariot, which is inspired by the vision of Ezekiel by its very nature and our transcendence towards the center of the tree of life. Other defining features and motifs royally found within the tarot itself is the Yod and its correspondence with Chokhmah and the story of Moses, or, or neoplatonically speaking with the light of truth, but more correctly from a Kabbalist's perspective with the hand of God that brought vision to Moses, leading him to the heart, Tiferet. The essence of the fourth day of creation, which comes more or less into play with the word road, is tied to a pruning of tyrants or a pruning of demonic powers. Hence my suspicion that it may have birthed the idea of the tree of death to begin with. So straight away, it is clear something important is about to occur, that upon that day that Ezekiel gained vision of a story of redemption for his people, that he will lead them, as the tarot would indicate, to a day of deliverance noted within the judgment card. And the reason I'm adding this is because it is the very first part of the tree that you get to explore. Judgment goes from the assembly of Israel, as detailed before, to hold. And it is described within the Bahir that Yeso becomes judgment. The moment our connection to God, the connection from Tiferet to Yesod, to Machod, the assembly, is broken. Hold represents our ability to spill evil into the world and for us then to, to correct our mistakes again as we move to Netzach.